Here's how to use OBS Studio step-by-step -step for beginners. OBS or Open Broadcaster Software is a powerful free live streaming software and recording software that can be difficult to get your head around. So this complete OBS tutorial will get you up to speed in no time. So this is what you see when you first open up OBS Studio. Now I'm showing you on the Mac, but the process is pretty much exactly the same on PC. So this area up here is your preview window. This is where we can see what it is that we're live streaming or recording. We've got all of our action controls down here to start and stop streaming, start and stop recording, and configure everything up. Across from that, we've got our transitions and our audio mixer. Now we'll cover these in more detail as we go through, and we can control our different sources and scenes down the bottom here. And this is really where a lot of the customization and setup and stuff comes into play. But the first thing I wanna do is get everything set up. So I wanna come down here to settings. Now, because OBS is a pretty advanced tool, there's a lot in here. I'm gonna run you through the fundamentals, the things that you need to configure up. But I would suggest for those of you, especially if you're feeling a little bit more advanced or you wanna really geek out with this stuff, I would suggest that you click through, see what options you have access to in here. And then at some point you can start to experiment with those things. But the first thing I wanna do in here is come over to video and let's set up our project size here, which they call it here, our canvas size. So right now I'm set to 3840 by 2160. So 4K, and it's saying here that this is a 16 by nine, so widescreen aspect ratio. We can customize this up. So if we wanted to switch from 4K to 1080, then we can pick here 1920 by 1080, and you can see that we've still kept that aspect ratio here of 16 by nine. If we wanted to instead, go live in portrait or record a portrait video, we could flip this. So we could go 1080 by 1920. And we've now got nine by 16 as our aspect ratio, so portrait. But I'm gonna switch this back here to widescreen. And so we've got our base canvas resolution, which is the actual project file here that we're gonna be working with essentially. And then we've got our output. So the quality that we're going to be live streaming or recording, and they don't need to match. You could do a 4K resolution, a higher quality, base canvas here, and you can still choose to live stream at a lower quality. Personally, I like to keep the two the same wherever possible. So I'm gonna set this here to 1920 by 1080 as well. So this way there's less processing done on the computer because everything matches. We then get to choose our frame rate. The default here is 30 frames per second. If you need a higher resolution, if you're doing a gaming video or something like that, then you can bump this up to 60 frames per second. Or if you need a specific frame rate to match maybe other cameras and things that you're using, you've got some popular options in here, 24, 25, 29, 97. But again, the default here is 30, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. Once we've picked our canvas or project resolution and the output that we're gonna be recording or live streaming at, then now we're gonna choose the quality of that. So when I come over here to output, we can then, again, if you're more advanced, you wanna to switch to advanced option, you can see it unlocks a lot more control in here. But I'm gonna leave this here as simple. But the main settings you wanna look at then on this page is are we gonna be live streaming? Are we gonna be recording? Are we going to be doing both streaming and recording at the same time and let's lock down the quality and the settings specific to that task. So in regards to streaming, the main one we wanna look at here is our video bitrate. So the quality of that 1080p stream that we've selected. Now this is something that you can do a quick Google search to work out what the best bitrate is for the platform you're gonna be streaming to. But as a general rule, the higher the bitrate, the better the quality. There is a point of diminishing returns, but this is also gonna be capped by your internet speed as well. So given that I've got decent internet here, I'm gonna bump this up. I would recommend something like 5,000 or five megabit per second if your internet can handle it. But obviously we can go much, much higher as well. The default settings here for a lot of this stuff is gonna be great for most people. Again, unless you wanna geek out or are you after something specific. So if you are going to be live streaming and you want really high quality music, then you can obviously bump up the audio bit rate or the quality of the audio here too. Moving down here under recording though, this is where we can choose where our file is gonna be saved, our video recording. We can then customize up the quality. So we're going to keep it the same as what we've just set for streaming up here, in which case this setting is fine, or we can actually select here if we want a high quality, indistinguishable or lossless, which is a tremendously large file size. Again, I'd probably leave this here as same as stream, and this way whatever settings we've set here are gonna be the same for our recording. We can also choose the type of file that we're gonna be recording as well. So I'm on a Mac, the default here right now is an MOV file, but we obviously have options in here as well for things like MP4 or MPEG4 files, and if this is going over your head,
head, again, the default settings are probably gonna be all you'd need. Now, if you're gonna be setting up to record, then that's all we need to do at this point in settings. If you're gonna be streaming though, this is where we can come over here to stream and we can select where it is we're going to be live streaming to and obviously create that connection to be able to go live. So we can see here the default for us here is YouTube RTMPS. But you've also got things like Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and a lot of others. If we hit show all here, it becomes a really big list. There's lots of different supported places, or we can choose custom and we can enter our own settings here to broadcast to other places as well. But in this case here, I'm gonna choose YouTube and then we can just click here to connect our account. It'll then prompt us to sign in with our YouTube channel. And when that's done, you can see that we've linked it here to a test channel I have. Justin's really super awesome channel great name that's ready for live streaming. Once you're done then, you wanna hit okay. Now, because I have picked YouTube live here, we can see we now get this pop-up here where once we go live, we'll see our YouTube chat. It says here, once broadcast has been created, your live chat will appear here and private broadcasts aren't supported. So we've got the chat here that's popped up and we can pick this up and we can move it around. We can dock it here if we'd like so that we've got a smaller area here for our chat. But then we also down the bottom here below this now was our YouTube live control panel. So we can sign into our YouTube channel here too in this window and we can monitor our live stream and start and stop the live stream from YouTube's end all from within OBS now as well. This is a fairly recent update. We used to have to do that separate. We also have the ability to close these though if we don't want them and we can bring them back up at any time by coming over here to the menu item for docs and then we can see which ones we have on and off. So the YouTube live control panel there is off now, chat is off. We can also turn on stats for when we're live and we can also enable and disable the rest of these uh, default docs here as well. If you mess this up, you can always come up here and choose reset docs as well, which has definitely saved me a few times. Now that we've got our live stream or recording set up. We now want to go ahead and bring in our cameras, our webcams, screen shares, any of that stuff, the piece that we actually want to broadcast or record. Because as you can see right now, this whole area is blank. So we come down the bottom here and we have this area for scenes. There'll be one scene at a minimum. By default, you need to have at least one. And then we have sources inside of a scene. So let's go ahead here and let's add a source. I want to hit this little plus button down here. And you can see we've got lots of different things that we can add into our scene here. We can just bring in an audio source, like a microphone. We could bring in a web browser, images. We can do a background color if we want. Lots of different stuff. And again, this is a super advanced tool. So we're gonna keep this simple. So we're gonna come down here to video capture device. We can give this a name. Let's call this webcam one. And I'm gonna choose, okay. And now we get to choose which camera is webcam one. So we can pick our device here. You can see all the different ones on this Mac right now. I'm gonna choose Insta360 link. And then we can also adjust the quality of the webcam here at this point too. So it says the preset here is high. It's high medium or low in terms of quality, or we can actually specify the video resolution again, 1080p, 4K in the case of this webcam because it supports it. I'm gonna choose 1080 just so that everything matches with what we've done before, and I'm gonna choose okay. So right now we have one scene, and this scene has me full screen here in the webcam. Let's go ahead and add another scene, and let's call this screen, let's choose okay, and maybe let's rename scene number one. I'm just gonna right click on it, and let's choose rename and let's call this camera. So we have camera and we have screen. So let's go ahead and add our computer screen for screen here. Click the plus for sources. I'm gonna choose screen capture. Now obviously on Windows, it's not gonna be called Mac OS screen capture. It'll just be screen capture or display capture. So then we can choose, do we wanna capture our entire display, a specific window or a specific application? In this case, I'm gonna choose window. I'm then going to pick the window that we wanna use. So I've got a Safari tab here open with YouTube and then I'm gonna hit okay. And we've now got our screen here showing in this tab. Now we also have the ability here to resize this. So you can see here, it's too big at this point. So we can pick this up, we can drag it around. We've got these handles here on the side that we can shrink this down so that it fits. Maybe something like this, maybe we'll scroll it up so we don't get all those tabs across the top. Okay, second scene created. So the first one, camera, we click on that and we're on camera. Scene number two is our screen. Then it's just our full screen showing YouTube at this case. Now let's say that we wanted to create a scene which is a mix of both. There's a couple of different ways that we could do this, but the easiest way is we've already got the screen one set up. Let's duplicate this. Let's right click on this. Let's choose duplicate. 
Let's give it a name, screen with camera. Let's go okay. So we've got our screen, make sure we've got this one here, screen with camera selected. We can then hit the plus down here and we can add in our video capture device here. Now we can either add our existing webcam here or we can bring it in as a second copy of it, a second instance of it. If we just brought in this one here that we've already created and then we made changes to it in our other scene, then that would apply to here too. If we wanna create our own settings in this specific scene for that, then I would bring it in as a new camera. So we could call it here webcam one because it's still camera one, but maybe we go V2 in this case. So I'm gonna choose okay. Again, we would choose our camera Insta360 link. We can choose our quality here. Let's go 1920 by 1080. Let's choose okay. And what we can do now so that we can see both is that we can shrink this down and we can pick it up, we can move it around, we can really customize this up. I'm sure you guys have seen stuff like this before. Now, if we hold down Option or Alt when we are scaling here, you can see we also have the ability to crop. So let's say that we didn't want this whole shot here of me. We can hold down Option or Alt and we can just crop this down here so that it's just me and maybe now we'll scale that up and maybe we'll move me up here in this case and we've now got this scene created. So we've got our full screen camera, we've got our screen here where we can click and move around and show our computer screen and we've got a third one here, screen with camera, which is the same but obviously with me on camera. So you can see how quick and easy these things are to set up, but also when you're recording or when you're live, you can literally just click on these things here to switch between the different scenes. And you can create a bunch of these different scenes to really build out what you want this to look like. Now you can also see that when I switch between the scenes here, there's like a little transition or a fade between them. We can actually change that here. So the default here is for fade over this amount of time, 300 milliseconds. We could actually change it to a direct cut. So it's just going to switch between these without any fade. So again, we can customize this stuff up. And we can also add a bunch of effects to take the customization to the next level. So let's just say we go back to the full camera one here. Let's just right click on webcam and we can choose filters. Now in here, there's audio and video filters and there's effect filters. So we just click on the plus here. Let's have a look at some of the things we could do in here. Chroma key, so green screen to remove the background. Color correction to tweak the colors in this shot. There's cropping, there's masking, there's scrolling, there's sharpening, lots of different things that we can do in here. But let's just pick color correction. And you can see then we could brighten this shot up, we could darken it down, adjust the uh, saturation to boost the colors a little bit, all to help you really dial everything in. Now up here under audio and video filters, this is where you can add things like an equalizer or a compressor to dial in your audio. You could even add a delay to your video. If your video and your audio are out of sync, we can customize all of that stuff up. I'm just gonna hit close out of this now. And we can see that we've got a color effect applied to this one. It's not applied to our other one down here, but we could go through and we can add that same effect to the webcam in here too, if we wanted. And again, you can set all of this stuff up before you start recording or before you go live, or you also have the ability to do this stuff on the fly as well. Meaning that during your recording or your live stream, if you wanted to pick up this webcam here and move it around or even turn it on or off, you can easily do that here from the controls and that's gonna happen live in your show or recording. But there's another advanced mode that you could kick into here called studio mode. And it's kind of the mix of both of those. So if we enable studio mode here, you can see now we have program. So this is what's going live or what's been recorded. And we can also see a preview here. So you'll see now if I make changes in the preview window, let's just move the webcam over to this other side. This actually hasn't happened live or in the recording yet. When we want that to happen, then we can just press transition here and now that has happened. So this gives us the ability to add text or graphics or things and to change stuff up while we're live here, but not actually push it live to our recording or live stream until we're ready for that to happen. But for simplicity, and especially if you're just starting out, you'll probably find it's easier to disable the studio mode and everything just happens in real time. If you're picking something up, that's actually happening in the recording or the stream. So that's how we can customize up the scenes and the visuals and all of that stuff. But in terms of the audio, and we wanna pick which microphone we're gonna use, if we want sounds from our computer coming through or not, all that's done down here in this audio mixer. You can see that we've got different volume levels 
level sliders for things like our desktop audio. So I could slide that down or I could hit mute here if I don't want any computer sounds coming through. Likewise with the screen capture here as well. We can adjust our microphone volume here as well. So if we're too loud, we can quiet it down or boost it up. If we wanna dial things in even further, we can press the settings button down here and we can really dial in some of this stuff like your balance, your sync offset, audio monitoring if you want it for certain audio things. Again, much more on the advanced side of things. But if you've got multiple microphones and things in your computer, then to actually pick which one this default microphone is, that's actually back over here under settings again and under audio. And then we can choose our mic auxiliary audio. It's just currently set to default, but we can actually pick which one that is. So if I wanted to use my Rode microphone here, I can lock that down at this point and choose okay. And any adjustments I make here at this point are to that specific microphone. We can also add different microphones or audio sources for the different scenes if we'd like to as well. Again, probably a little bit more advanced, but if we hit the plus, then we can add an input capture device for that specific scene. But in terms of actually live streaming from here, starting, stopping our stream, we've got our start streaming button here, which is gonna start that stream for us. Again, if we're going to YouTube and we've got that integration here in OBS, I would recommend that you bring up here the docs, so the chat and the live control panel, so you can monitor things while you're live. And then to stop the streaming, this start button is obviously gonna change to a stop button. And then pretty much exactly the same for the recording. To start and stop the recording, you've got this here as a separate option for you. Now, there's one more really cool setting that I wanna to touch on quickly in here, and this is the virtual camera. You can see we've got option here, start virtual camera. So what this is gonna allow us to do is inside of other tools like Zoom or Teams or Google Meet, any other tool that uses a webcam, we can actually use OBS here as a virtual webcam for those other tools. Meaning that we can have our screen shares and custom stuff and text and graphics and all of that stuff that we're controlling from OBS and we can feed this into those other tools. It really is as easy as choosing start virtual camera and then in one of those other tools, we can just select here OBS virtual camera, and then whatever we're controlling in OBS will be reflecting through into these other apps or tools as well. So now that you're up to speed in OBS, if you wanna level up your video content creation, whether it's live streams or whether it's regular videos, I've got a video linked on screen sharing our content creation process and how we're able to streamline and optimize everything from idea right through to release. So definitely check that one out. There's also a bunch of other resources and links in the description box below to help help you even further, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.